Chapter 22 He had been sleeping heavily for about two hours, when, towards midnight, he was roused by a whispering of strange voices that seemed to come from the courtyard. Putting the tip of his nose out of the kennel, he saw four little beasts with dark fur that looked like cats, standing consulting together. But they were not cats. They were polecats. Carnivorous little animals, especially greedy for eggs and young chickens. One of the polecats, leaving his companions, came to the opening of the kennel and said in a low voice, Good evening, Melampo. My name is not Melampo, answered the puppet. Oh, then who are you? I am Pinocchio. What are you doing here? I am acting as watchdog. Then where is Melampo? Where's the old dog who lived in this kennel? He, he died this morning. Oh, dead is he? Poor beast, he was so good. But judging you by your face, I should say that you were also a good dog. I, I beg your pardon, but I, I am not a dog. Not a dog? Then what are you? I am a puppet. And you are acting as watchdog? That is only too true, as a punishment. Well then, I'll offer you the same conditions that we made with the late Melampo, and I'm sure you'll be satisfied with them. What are these conditions? One night a week, you are to allow us to get into the poultry yard, as we've done hitherto, and to carry off eight chickens. Of these chickens, seven are to be eaten by us, and one we will give to you, on the express understanding, however, that you pretend to be asleep, and that it never enters your head to bark and to wake the peasant. Did Melampo act in this manner? asked Pinocchio. Certainly, and we were always on the best of terms with him. Sleep quietly, and rest assured that before we go, we will leave by the kennel a beautiful chicken ready plecked for your breakfast tomorrow. Have we understood each other clearly? Only too clearly, answered Pinocchio, and he shook his head threateningly, as much as to say, you shall hear of this shortly. The four pelcats, thinking themselves safe, repaired to the poultry yard, which was close to the kennel, and having opened the wooden gate with their teeth and claws, they slipped in one by one. But they had only just passed through when they heard the gate shut behind them with great violence. It was Pinocchio who had shut it, and for greater security he put a large stone against it to keep it closed. Then he began to bark, and he barked exactly like a watchdog. Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Hearing the barking, the peasant jumped out of bed, and taking his gun he came to the window and asked, What's the matter? There are robbers, answered Pinocchio. Where are they? In the poultry yard. I'll come down directly. In fact, in less time than it takes to say amen, the peasant came down. He rushed into the poultry yard, caught the polecats, and having put them into a sack, he said to them in a tone of great satisfaction, At last you fall into my hands. I might punish you, but I'm not so cruel. I'll content myself instead by carrying you in the morning to the innkeeper of the neighboring village, who will skin and cook you as hares with a sweet sour sauce. It's an honor that you don't deserve, but generous people like me don't consider such trifles. He then approached Pinocchio and patted him, and amongst other things he asked him, How did you manage to discover the four thieves? To think that Melampo, my faithful Melampo, never found out anything. The puppet might then have told him the whole story. He might have informed him of the disgraceful conditions that had been made between the dog and the polecats. But he remembered that the dog was dead, and he thought to himself, What's the good of accusing the dead? The dead are dead, and the best thing to be done is to leave them in peace. When the thieves got into the yard, were you asleep or awake? 
the peasant went on to ask him. I was asleep, answered Pinocchio. But the polecats woke me with their chatter, and one of them came to the kennel and said to me, If you promise not to bark and not to wake the master, we will make you a present of a fine chicken, ready plucked. To think that they should have had the audacity to make such a proposal to me. For although I am a puppet, possessing perhaps nearly all the faults in the world, there is one that I certainly will never be guilty of, that of making terms with and sharing in the gains of dishonest people. Well said, me boy, cried the peasant, slapping him on the shoulder. Such sentiments do you honour, and as proof of my gratitude, I will at once set you at liberty, and you may return home. And he removed the dog's collar.